we want to redo this one real quick just to go over it again, or are we good? Let's do it one more time. One more time? All right. So we have our end user. Or actually, do you guys want to talk through each of the, the different paths here? We need to use a log symbol to the portal. Awesome. Yeah. That says, yeah, great. Username and password looks good. And user clicks on a link that jumps over to the presentation server. Yeah. What happens next? You have an opt in BI server. Yeah, I'll toss it down to the database. Yeah. What is the database cable going to do now? I give them all the information about what they can see and can't see. Correct. Hands it to me and figure out what reports that oh, no, no, no. we, we, we skip the portal now because the end okay. user is interfacing directly with the presentation server. Okay. Yeah, it's just it, it's pretty important. You, you can actually embed reports into a portal. Um, so we're, we're actually not really talking about that scenario. So single sign-on, usually, if you're going through a portal, the user still has access to the full OBIE environment, the regular normal screen that they would see if they didn't use SSO. We're not really talking about embedding specific report objects into a portal at this point. So you can, why use, we're skipping the you can use SSO to avoid that, because we were talking about yes. that was just yeah. certain figure out what business you did, somebody is that showing you their dashboard, and yeah. completely look at all the rest of it. Sure, well, you, I mean, you could do that without integrating right into the portal, but right. yeah, I mean, if, yeah, bottom line is you can do both, both approaches. They either see OBIE in its full window, or you integrate part of OBIE in the portal. So portal here is basically your internet site. Yeah, it, it could, could be, be anything. It could be anything. anything. I mean, we're, we're using portal on a generic sense here. Anything that um, you know, a user interfaces with first before they go into OBIE. Okay. Perfect. All right. So let's take a seat. Thank you. Oh, keep that on. Keep that on. Call you back up in a couple minutes for our for our robust and secure single sign-on approach. I think we're going through the, the actual steps themselves pretty quick. You guys have a very good grasp uh, of what we're doing here with single sign-on and different handshakes. You know, again, we have our, our end user that's going to quote unquote knock on the door of the portal and say, hey, here's my username and password. The portal says, oh, that's great. I need to go over to the, the LDAP server to look oh, it up to make sure that it's really a valid user. And the LDAP server can pass that back to the portal and say, yep, everything looks great. Now, that end user is going to click on that magical link, presuming that the, the portal is going to say, here's the link over to the OBI DE, and I've already authenticated that user. Pass them over to the presentation server. The presentation server says, well, all right, you're authenticated. I need to authorize you now. And so now we're going to pass it over to the BI server. BI server says, oh, that, that's super. Let's go over to the, the database table, look up what that person actually is authorized to see, and this includes users that have access to answers, publisher, even specific dashboards, specific pages, uh, specific parts of the actual catalog itself. And then the, the authorization table is going to pass that information back to the BI server. The BI server is going to say, all right, let me pass that over to the presentation server. The presentation server is going to take that information and say, all right, here's what you can and cannot see. What you can see actually gets displayed to that end user via the viewable dashboard. And again, we're skipping the portal in that last step, and the person is actually directly working with the presentation server itself. Now, there's a number of methods that we can use in order to talk to, have that handshake between the portal and OBI itself. You can do a server variable method. Um, we say we're passing information from the portal over to the GI server itself in predefined pre protocols. And what does that really mean? Well, if you're using Java, there's a certain variable that you need to set. Uh, if you're using other languages, there, there's certain predefined variables that you need to tell OBI about so that OBI can interpret that handshake code. Um, you can also set a cookie on the, uh, the client's machine that is jumping over the cookie, all the information within that cookie is stored with text, obviously not a very uh, really secure model by any means. Um, we're using HTTP header. Very common method to just add a variable to the HTTP header string that gets sent over. OBI 
API can parse through that, that header method, looking for that specific variable and say, all right, great, things look good. However, these ways can be easily spoofed. Slash hacker can do some things to the client machine, interrupt traffic. So now we need to figure out, all right, how do we make this bulletproof so that nobody can sniff out packets and, um, and compromise that particular session?